Lowell, Indiana Explained. Hey, whether you lived in Lowell your entire life or this is the first year learning about Lowell, this video has content for you. In this video, we're gonna go over the history of Lowell, where it got its name and the exact location. We'll look at similar uh, town, demographics, schools, what are school rankings, crime, water. Why is water on the list? You gotta wait and find out, right? Things to do, taxes, home prices, and much more. Hey, my name's Tony Anzer, your Northwest Indiana and Chicagoland real state agent and I look forward to bringing this content hey we're going to start off with the history of Lowell so we'll see that you know, town's obviously named Lowell now it was originally inhabited by Native American Native Americans and including the Potawatomis and in the late 1670s the French settled the region the land where the town stands today was officially purchased by the state in 1832 the city was named by its founder, Melvin Arthur Halstead, in honor of his hometown of Lowell, Massachusetts. I thought that was pretty interesting while researching this video, that it was Lowell, Indiana, it's named after Lowell, Massachusetts. So we'll get into stats about Lowell. So population of just about 11,000, it's about half guys, half girls, 20% senior citizens, average age, some are a little younger than 40. Yeah, median income of about 71,000, and the average commute time is about 37 minutes. How that's figured out, I don't know exactly, but hey, if you'd allow me 20 seconds of self-introduction here. My, like I said, my name is Tony Anzer, real estate agent serving Indiana and Illinois. Got you covered on both sides of the border, and we'd love to help you with your real estate buying or selling needs. You know, my contact info's here. It's popping up on the screen at various times here, and is in the content. Uh, the, the chapter, the, the uh, description below. There we go. And in there, you'll find in that description, you'll find lots of other similar videos. Uh, so if you're interested in this, you'll have similar videos for all the Northwest Indiana towns and doing Illinois too. And also one video that's really popular is I have an all about Northwest Indiana video that gives a little bit about all the Northwest Indiana towns. So a lot of people find that really helpful. Uh, these are those other community videos that we're working on or have done already. Cool. So back to just Lowell specifically. Uh, so Lowell, uh, on a ranking and reviews, we use this website, niche.com, and they give Lowell overall a B for these various reasons. Uh, we went through uh, the population already, and uh, a couple of notes here that I did think it was worth no re realizing is that uh, many residents tend to lean conservative. It's definitely more of a Republican town. And it's a strong union town, too. They've got a Labor Day parade that's one of the biggest I've ever seen. It goes like two, three hours, and it's chock full of unions. Uh, makes up about a good chunk of it. Uh, so it's a blue-collar town, uh, and, you know, schools are great. I mean, you look, every, everything here is, you know, pretty good here. So the only, I think, this weighted B comes down a little bit because of weather, which, yeah, what can we do about that? And commute, you know. Other than that, uh, I think everything is going pretty good for Lowell. I'm actually, I live in Dyer, which is uh, just a couple towns over. Yeah, so getting into odds and ends about Lowell, we got Lowell. It's although we're in we're in Northwest Indiana, so here the yellow here. This we're looking at the state of Indiana here. Obviously, all this yellow here is Eastern Time Zone. Uh, we are in this red spot here, and with that, this spot is Central Time. And it's uh, something that had to do with us being, you know, mostly an extension from Chicago as things have developed to Northwest Indiana and further south. So we are in the central time zone, even though most of Indiana here you see is in the, oh, I can draw myself there, is in the Eastern time zone. Yeah, so what I want to go here is I'm gonna to segue to my Google Earth view. I'm a big Google Earth fan here, as you guys will see in this video. So we're, this is the town of Lowell. I'm super zoomed in right now. I got the school layer shown uh, but I'm gonna zoom out and just for perspective to the area I'm gonna pause this and turn some layers off all right here we go we got my layers adjusted properly and so we're going to see that again Lowell is down here and for perspective in the area the neighboring towns to the north you got Cedar Lake here let me change color here so it's a little more easy to see yeah so we got Cedar Lake here Demotts to the southeast. The Indiana Illinois border is this line right here. And we'll see that we got, you know, Valparaiso to the northeast. Uh, Beecher is pretty much the closest Illinois town to the west. And uh, then Grant Park, too. 
So for location and like where you would like hang out. So Lowell itself, uh, we'll zoom in in a bit here. It has pretty much, it's got everything you need for a grocery store and stuff like that. But you'd find yourself in generally like uh, in, in Maryville. Like I live in Dyer over here. Here we go, right over here. And, and Maryville is where it's got like the local Costco and big box stores like that. So you might find yourself taking Route 2 to 65 to go up to Maryville to stock up. But uh, there's, you know, grocery stores and stuff in, in Lowell itself. Lowell's got restaurants and everything else you need. Uh, just for perspective on some other towns or uh, other landmarks here, let me zoom out is, you know, we're seeing Lowell's here to Midway Airport and Sears Tower, you know, we're talking uh, without traffic. So if you took like a early flight or something, you're looking at like an hour 15 to get up there. Oh, here's over here up here. And we'll get into some of those uh, commute times in a bit here. But zooming in a little bit, we see here's the, you know, the town of Lowell. It's definitely a rural feel. Uh, it's, it's definitely more rural than uh, St. John, Dyer, Cherville. These feel a little more like uh, suburb extensions, but Lowell definitely has more of a rural feel to it than the, the, some of the you know the other towns we're seeing here. Demont's got a you know a rural feel to it as well, but I just wanted to point that out. I'm in the schools a little bit, but you can see I have the schools turned on, so these are school locations, and in the down, so there's an older downtown area here, and that is. Yeah, there's restaurants and you could just go and like you know walk the strip so to speak for a bit and then on the eastern side of town is where like the main grocery stores are i think i forget oh strack and van till and there's fast food um so along this main route two is where a majority of the stores are. all right water so by trade i'm a civil engineer so water is always interesting to me but uh, one thing to note about the northwest indiana towns is that you either have lake michigan water or you have well water, uh, and in Lowell, the, Lowell is a well water community. So this is a well at a single house, but it's the well water for a town looks similar, except you have a this is just a grander scale. So water is pumped out from the ground and then is treated and then pumped into the dist, you know the distribution system that goes to everyone's house. Uh, so with that, you just get into you have more. There's like water hardness. That's another discussion. Uh, but you, water will be harder than it will be in Lake Michigan water. And you'll have like again, minerals. So uh, you'll have a little bit of this going on when it comes to watering. Uh, but this is water that's not been, that hasn't been softened yet. And so in houses, what you do to soften the water is you've got. Uh, so here we see a, I'm going to my drawing tool here again. Yeah, so here we see a, a water, a whole house filter. Those are pretty key. These are low maintenance, low cost. And then this is a water softener and the water softener has a salt basin with it. I think there's another name for it. And uh, this gets into the chemistry of how it works. Inside of here is kind of like a bunch of packaging peanut type things. And they basically, the salt solution accompanied with that strips the nastiness out of the water and then filters it out. So that's kind of a high level description. <laughs> If there's any environmental engineers watching this, you might differ with me a little bit. But <laughs> and then there's also a couple solutions that this thing on the left here is called a Berkey. It's a, it's a name brand. It's kind of like saying Kleenex here. Maybe I should use a different color. But these are really low maintenance. And uh, like people in Beecher, Illinois, Beecher's got horrible water. And I got friends that have these Berkey systems. They're like 300 bucks. Uh, you just pour water in it. It filters by gravity. And then it's great to drink. You know, taste is great. And then here is what this is, is a, a reverse osmosis system. And so you can have those tapped in directly under your sink. And even if you've got a good uh, a refrigerator filter, then that can do the job too. Uh, but a lot of people find that they want some sort of uh, filtered water as opposed to just drinking it straight from the city water. And so this slide here, I won't bore you to death reading through this. But this lets you know which, so these are the Northwest Indiana towns or the more Northwestern, there's some of that that's not on the list. But this slide tells you who, which towns have Lake Michigan water and which have well water. So if that's of interest to you. And one more plug for myself and the last one I promise. Uh, we'd love to work with you guys. That's why we do these videos. So if you're interested in buying and selling in the region or know anybody that is, we're gonna shoot them our video or 
get us reach out directly uh we, we'd love to help you out a lot of most of our business actually comes from youtube and we appreciate the referrals or the opportunity to work with you guys uh we're getting the schools so the schools here as you can see uh there's uh for elementary schools we got lake prairie we got oak hill we got three creeks elementary and we got lowell middle school and lowell high school so this is my reminder here to go back to the google earth here and so we're going to see that i first have to click off of this for that to work okay now i can interact with this so here's here's where the schools are um you know lake prairie over here oak hill lowell three creeks Lowell high school and all in all it's not i mean to get from one side to the other uh, town to the other you know with traffic you're probably talking 10 minutes from Lowell high school to prairie Ele elementary school so that the, there's really you know commuting's not really an issue in lowell the town's not that big to really worry about commuting so lake very so this is going to be these slides are going to just go over the, the rankings and again this is from niche.com as to how they rank uh the schools and really the thing of note to watch i mean all the schools are, are fine in the area uh, but what I always find here to know is that there's 395 students and a student to teacher ratio of 15 to 1. Um, and then if, you know, test scores are listed here. So those stats are going to be on each of these slides if you just want to look out for them. I think not to bore you, I won't read through each of them. All right, Oak Hill Elementary. And again, so that's this school here on the south uh, side of Lowell. You see Lowell's kind of developing a little like a shoe right now, but... Uh, so A minus, we've got 554 students in grades K through five, students to future ratio of 17 to one. And the other some stats about that. Three Creeks Elementary, Three Creeks is this guy here. That is ranked A minus, uh, 518 students, student to teacher ratio of 16 to one. And then Lowell Middle School. So Lowell Middle School, where is that guy at? He is, here we go. He's, I think this is newer, this is a newer construction. Uh, so that's where the middle school is. It's, it's south of town, actually. Let's see, students to rate, teacher ratio of 18 to one. Lowell High School, so Lowell High School is right on the east end of the town of Lowell. And yeah, so here's that guy. Yeah, so here's the stats about Lowell High School. Uh, 1,068 kids in the senior high student to teacher ratio of 16 to 1. And okay, so that's Lowell High School. And just to show it one more time, I actually went to a high school dance there with a friend from back in the day. Yep, so that is the high school. You can see the facilities baseball, baseball, track, football. Okay, cool. All right, moving on. Uh, one thing I want to touch on is the voucher program. So in the state of Indiana, the state of Indiana has have a voucher program for private school tuition assistance for a long time. Uh, however, they just recently, like last two years, significantly raised the income limits. So if you're a family of four, you can make something like $250,000 a year and still qualify. And with that, the state pays, there's a certain amount per school district that a state will pay. I think this year it's around 7,000, uh, around 7,000 plus or minus. So my, my family actually benefits from that. We used to not to, and then they, when the income limits were adjusted, then we did, and so now it's pretty cool because the state pays like the majority of our kids' private school. If they go to a private Christian school, and it pays for the majority of that, uh, which is awesome. So how you read this graph is, or this better pie chart it's not pie chart but <laughs> so 50 is like the average like how much crime there is in the average community in the u.s so this uh, we'll see that oh, my mouse was sticking there we'll see that we're sub 20 so that's significantly less than what average crime is uh this next slide here is going to give you a summary of crime in the other towns and it's it's raised 50 percent is like average crime so you'll see that some are a little less some are a little low or yeah Less or more, not less or low, maybe it's the same thing. Okay, cool. And so how long to get to? The slide just shows you, uh, you know, to get to O'Hare Airport, which I flew out of, uh, got home Friday, actually, from Denver. Uh, so that is here. I'm actually, I'm doing a YouTube video for that. It may not be posted by the time this one is, but you can check that out and see what the O'Hare Airport experience it is from Northwest Indiana. So these are just travel times. You know, sometimes people want to be only so far along from a uh an airport train commuting this is a 
This is a reminder to me just to say that train commuting really isn't convenient from Lowell. There isn't anything. So Lowell is you know further south than what we're seeing here. And so the nearest train would be like a university park, which is over here. So this would be like a half hour or better ride to get to. And then you'd have a, you know, to get to downtown, that's like a 50 minute to an hour ride, depending on if it's an express or limited stops. There is a train. Oh, my mouse is thinking again. There is a train coming through Dyer, like Munster area. So you could conceivably, once that's built, you could like drive there and then take, but you're still looking at probably an hour and a half each way or better if you're going to downtown and trying to get there by a train. So driving is usually a better solution right now. Okay, property taxes and property taxes is a reason to use the fun confetti thing here, which it was, yeah, there we go, <laughs> a little bit of a delay. So one thing that's beautiful about Indiana is that the property taxes are capped at, here we go, gotta wait for this thing to kick in. So Northwest Indiana has a 1% property tax cap for owner occupied properties. So if you're Say your house is worth four hundred thousand dollars. The Indiana assessed value is usually less than that. So say it's three fifty, and so your max tax would be uh, three thousand five hundred, and usually it's even less than that on, uh, on an assessed value. Uh, uh, the only it can go slightly over one percent if if there's voter approved projects. So like if there's a school referendum, but even with that, it's usually only a couple hundred dollars of of these voter approved projects. Usually only affect your taxes a couple hundred bucks per project. And but if you would get the note on this though, is also a lot of people not from the area will look at the house costs here and think, oh hey, I should just buy a house in it as an investment property. And then when I explain to them that, oh, hey, in your cash flow analysis, just remember that you're going to be at a 2% because it's not owner-occupied, and that breaks a lot of their uh, their deals. So just a heads up, if you're looking at an investment, you got to uh, factor in the correct taxes. And Okay, that's kind of state average. Okay, that's not of no consequence there. And so here is just some stats on sold property taxes. Yeah, so these are property taxes for ending 2022 i should probably update these pretty soon but this just gives you a ballpark of so like in lowell uh you know median tax amount was 2400 dollars on property tax so compared to a lot of places like if you're coming from texas or california like you're going to be dancing you're going to want to hit this cool confetti button as much as you can i'm trying to make my effects work here it's not working real well <laughs> here we go there we go there should be some confetti hitting the screen here in a second there we go so that's property taxes uh and this just shows you the same thing like if, if you wanted to get through the weeds of what a tax bill looks like here we'll see that the assessed value of this house is three hundred fifty-one thousand. so that means that the max cap it could be is thirty-five sixteen. There are some voter approved projects, 776, which made the uh, taxes on this particular property be 4,300. And I picked one on purpose that had a lot of voter approved projects. Uh, it's usually not that much even. Home prices. All right, so uh, here we go on home prices. And this is through June, 2023. So we'll see that the median price point for Lowell is about $334,000. Uh, so yes, yeah, so that's right here waiting for my pen to start and that gets you like a three bed two bath like a, you know pretty decent sized house uh, Currently as of the last did the math The uh, average house that sold is on the market like you know sub 20 days So even though interest rates at the time of this recording are like a little over seven uh, The market is still moving pretty good and that's for houses that are priced right and moved in ready move moved move in ready uh, We talked about that uh, some other just tax information. So income tax is 3.15% for the state. And but what a lot of people don't know is they'll see this and they'll think, because in Indiana we're at like, or Illinois is like, if I think it's 5% or like four, I think it's five even. And so people will see, oh, Indiana's less. And it is, but in, the, in Indiana, the counties can assess a supplemental income tax. And so in Lake County, which Lowell's in, has a 1.5% county tax. And so you, you have to add these together. So adding those together gets you a 4.65% property tax. So uh, just keep, keep that in mind. It's still better than Illinois. Uh, let's see, state sales tax is at 7%. Illinois is higher. Cook County is 
in Illinois. Uh, there's no sales tax on food, which was a pleasant surprise to me when we moved here. I'm from right over the border, uh, South Holland and Beecher. Uh, but when we moved, went to the grocery store here for the first time, I realized there's no tax. It, it actually, it makes a difference when it adds up. And one other thing of note too, is that municipalities can't add additional taxes in Illinois. They can, they can add like, you'll see like places for eating tax or other taxes, uh, just, other interesting things here of taxes, like social security taxes can't be taxed. I think that's the case everywhere. But um, uh, but one thing to note, retirement income is taxed here in Illinois. Uh, this generally isn't. So that's one thing that Illinois has better uh, over us. And here's some information, you know, some other stuff here. But uh, won't get in the weeds on that other detailed tax information. Okay, I'm waiting for my clicker to come back. Okay, here we go. All right. So if you wanted to see a detailed analysis here, my reminder here of MLS search for these type of houses, I have a video on YouTube. It's called here. It's called Lowell, Indiana. How much do homes cost? So if you look that up, uh, this is a 10 minute video that just goes into housing types. So it will show you how much, you know, what do homes cost at different price points? Or if you're like, Hey, I'm, I want to get as much as I can for a $3,500 a month payment. What kind of house does that get me? This video goes into the weeds on that. So you could check that out. Yeah. So what I queued up here is my MLS view. So the, the, as a licensed real estate agent, again, love to help you buy or sell a home. <laughs> Please reach out. I just wanted to, so I pulled up everything that's sold within the last six months. I'll just kind of go through a couple different price points here. So let's start at like 200,000. So we don't, let's go maybe 250. 250 show you what so let's look at like five different houses at or four let's say four houses let's go to the next page so you can kind of see the general housing stock here let's try this guy 225 let's see what these photos look like this is what 225,000 gets you it looks like they have limited photos i'll scroll down a bit to a higher price point let's go that's 267 let me skip a couple pages let me go down here, see where we're at, 315. Yeah, let's try 320. This is a tri-level design, pretty common in the older section of town. So this is what like 320 gets you. It's a neat toilet that one had. All right, get the gist of that one. Let me skip a couple pages. We'll go to, all right, so there's a lot in the 300 to 400 range. Let's check out, I think this is a new construction here, and this is just shy of 400,000. These are pretty typical designs of newer production houses. So builders that come in the area then just build uh, spec houses. That's a pretty similar type design. And so that's what like almost 400 gets you. And now let's go up to, you see there's not, it starts to top out there. So here's 450. There's 58 photos of this guy, good chunk of land. We won't go through more than a handful of photos here. I'm just gonna fast forward through some of these. So you see what 450 gets you here. Nice house. There you go, okay. And then let's see what was the most expensive. What was the most expensive house? Maybe most expensive won't be a good fit, but 750, I looked at this one before, that's like 10 acres or something. Let's go with the standard, most expensive, typical house here. So this is 500,000. So this will show you what like 500,000 gets you. All brick, two story, three car garage. So that's, I mean, that's a decent amount of house. It's a good amount of house for 500K, that's for sure. So let me just fast forward through a few more. And again, I just wanted to give you a flavor, and that's the basement. I wanted to give you a flavor of what different price points get you here in Lowell, Indiana. Uh, this slide just has cost of living. Color coding shows where we are. We're a little bit less than you know average. So cost of living is pretty fair in the area. Okay, things to do. Yeah, so there's lots of parks in the area. There's downtown Lowell. Uh, we're close to Chicago and other things like that. There's a cool trail network in the area. Um, yeah, the Indiana Dunes State Park is a common thing to go to. That's probably, with, with no traffic, that's 45 minutes to an hour. Uh, it gets crazy in the summer. So if you go to the beach, go really early or go like at 2 p.m. <laughs> in, in between, you can just be stuck in traffic like forever. And just wanted to point out on my YouTube channel, on the, they have different playlists about neighborhood tours, of which this is one of those. So you could see tours like this about any of the other towns 
yeah, so that playlist, let's click the wrong button, has all kinds of other towns. So if you want to know more about Crown Point, Dyer, Munster, St. John, etc., that would be the playlist for you. Well, I hope that video was helpful. Again, we'd love to help you buy or sell. Please reach out. Information's on the screen and below. Thanks for watching. See you around town.